Is it in suitable environment for children? Well, apparently three years older, even though three-year-olds can't buy tickets because you have to be four. Not consistent. The event contains some interactions that may be unsuitable for children under five years old. Which is it? <laughs> At what age are kids safe to go watch the Oompa Loompa fucking crystal meth cooks? And I, I'm like, come on. It changes every time. Allow me to be your internet man today and explain the internet to you and why the internet can sometimes be a lovely place. Actually, this one is, is IRL. Okay, the grass gets this one. Grass, you win, okay? You may have seen a picture yesterday. Picture of an Oompa Loompa or someone looking to appear like an Oompa Loompa, uh, looking quite depressed, uh, looking a little macabre. Uh, I, I, I don't really know how to describe it. I, I can't really tell you uh, what you saw. I have to show you all and i did see some really funny uh internet comments but i didn't understand what it was like really about at first because uh, i saw people obviously you know tweeting about it and being like this looks like a you know like a meth uh cook uh i would say this was too on the nose this was like from some upcoming film uh you know very very depressed and sad looking oompa loompa working in what seems to be uh i wouldn't say a chocolate factory that wouldn't be the first thing i thought of when i saw this what is going on, right? Did you, like, I didn't even know why the internet was having a time with this. And I'll be honest, for a while, I didn't want to know because I was just kind of, like, enjoying just not fully understanding what this meme is about, why the internet was so, so excited about this meme and what was so silly about it. But then once you find out the real story, it becomes even more magical, even more delightful. It's actually quite splendid. Uh, the whole thing is a scam. <laughs> <laughs> and I, we should add an AI powered scam. All right. A Willy Wonka inspired experience was scamming people. And it was so bad that people called the fucking cops on them. I thought this is where dreams go to die, said one actor who was hired to work at the event. People who attended a Willy Wonka inspired chocolate experience in Glasgow, Scotland, were promised an extraordinary props, oversized lollipops, and a parade of sweet treats, all promoted with dreamlike candy colored images on their website. Oh, is the website still active? Please tell me it is. Willy's Chocolate Experience.com. Indulge in a chocolate fantasy like never before. Capture the enchantment. Whoa! Look at this enchantment! So much enchantment! Tickets to Willy's Chocolate Experience are on sale now. Welcome to Willie's Chocolate Experience. Dive into the whimsical of Willie's Chocolate Experience, a place where chocolate dreams become reality. Book your adventure now and embark on a journey filled with wondrous creations and enchanting surprises at every turn. Whoa, look at this! How in the world? How could you create imagery like this? How could anyone, how could one human being make something that looks this magical and delightful and candy-like and almost human? Enchanted gardens. Your journey begins in an enchanted garden with giant space sweets, vibrant blooms, mysterious looking sculptures, and magical surprises that add a layer of wonder to your chocolatey experience. Chocolatey has been covered, uh, capitalized, and spelt wrong. Uh, navigate through. Per Navigate through peculiar but enchanting garden surprises. Oh, sorry. Collecting delicious beans of all colors, shapes, and sizes. Who knows? Perhaps you might be able to grow your very own enchanting garden. That's cool. So, sounds uh, a little gibberishy. Looks a little gibberishy. Uh, like, I'm sure you're all pretty much getting close to the fact that this is obviously generated by AI. But this one took it one step further. It's one thing to have like a website that you kind of just threw together. Uh, the whole thing you could probably make in about 15 minutes using AI. Uh, and, and then like put that up there and then try to collect money somehow. Cryptocurrency would really seem like the way that people would have gone to collect. Like, hey, no NFTs are accepted, but we will accept Bitcoin, Ethereum. Did you see how much it's up right now? Thanks to the fact that Wall Street is leaving uh, all of these tech companies. Now they're pouring all their money into Bitcoin to make a whole bunch more money. And now uh, Bitcoin is going to be like, boom. And then all the people who have tons of money are going to make lots of money off of it. And then it's going to go flum. Everyone with FOMO jumps in to basically pay the rich. Uh, so that's what's happening right now, if you're wondering, and you saw Bitcoin go like this. But other people who want to uh, have their own kind of like, you know, magical experiences, what, what have you, they decided to do this, but they built it in the real world too. It's not just like a shitty AI powered website, which that in and of itself would have been, you know, kind of funny and, and a good start to a story. It's made with Imagination Lab, TM. As you can see here, very complex. Like, again, really complex. It would take an artist a long time to make this. So the Imagination Lab has to be real. 
In the Imagination Lab, prepare to be captivated by visual spectacle, encounter mind-expanding projections, optical marvels, and exhibit that transports you into the realm of creativity. This space invites you on a surreal journey where the boundaries between reality and fantasy harmoniously merge, resulting in an enchanting and visually striking encounter. Brace yourself for an adventure that will leave you spellbound in the Imagination Lab. Oh, there's the Twilight Tunnel. Uh, the Twilight Tunnel, both copyright, you know, they're trademarks, so no one steals the, the Twilight Tunnel. Uh, in the Twilight Tunnel, get ready for an exhilarating and immersive adventure. Journey through a dimly lit passage adorned with captivating projections and enigmatic sounds, surprising turns that will immense you in suspense and uh, excitement. I almost thought that said excrement. Probably would be closer, though. It's a heart-pounding experience uh, you've, all together, never experienced before. Well, that's good. So you can see here there's lighting, and that's uh, dim dickly, uh, dim light, twerding, uh, deprecations, dodgections, vivu sounds, enigmatic sounds. Oh, this one is almost English. Uh, Angrivel is Swede. Maybe this is Swedish. I don't know. Uh, M pretty. Uh, expected twits. Accept. <laughs> To, to it. Oh, sorry. Can you not see? Oh, that. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just looking at uh, the incredible marvels put together by the Twilight Tunnel. So here they are. So, em, em pretty, accepted, ac accepted twits, accepted twits. Yes. And then there's captivating entertainment, of course. In addition to all of this, uh, experience captivating live performances featuring charming characters singing original catchy tunes. Marvel at extraordinary props, oversized lollipops, and a parade of sweet treats. This event guarantees an immersive and delightful entertainment experience suitable for age three years old plus. Cat gacating, live performances, Carthy tons, exurdre lollipops, <laughs> a paradise of sweet treats. Now, this wasn't enough. They did it. My friends, they made this entire magical experience possible in the real world. Uh, they, they actually put the whole thing together at the Box Hub warehouse. Frequently asked questions. Do you have any questions? Many. Many. I do not feel they'll be answered by your uh, revealing frequently asked questions. Maybe you can find the answer here. So this is made by the House of Illuminati. Uh-oh. Uh, media partner. Uh, coming soon. Or, or is it is that the name of the media part? It's hard to tell, right? Contact us, press, partnerships, exhibits. Uh, it's a registered company in England and Wales. It's got a company number. They've got they've got an address, a publicly available address. Any resemblance to any character fictitious or living is purely coincidental. This experience is in no way related to the Wonka franchise, which is owned by Warner Brothers. But then why did you go for all... I mean, like, this is clearly you using the, the, the font. This is the, the Wonka font, and you're calling it Willy's. You're saying it's a magical Wonka-like experience. <laughs> All right, let me just take this off screen for a second because I'm slightly curious if uh, what pops up when I click on the fact. I don't want it to be a giant chocolate swinging dick or something. What can I expect from Willie's chocolate experience? Uh, all the same things. What does your ticket include? Uh, okay, so these don't seem too offensive. It's just text. Uh, general admission includes entry to the experience for any person four years uh, old, family ticket, but you said it was appropriate for three years old. Uh, includes entry to the experience for two adults, two child carer tickets, includes entry to one I experience for one room. person. I don't get why, like, how, I don't know, lazy do you have to be to not just, as a human, write out the thing that people might look up before they buy a ticket? Like, the barrier for entry, for me, like... I, I would have stopped a long time ago the second I saw just the AI written art everywhere. And just like, I've been, like if someone was like, hey, do you want to go to the Willy's Chocolate Extreme? Uh, I would have been like, no, this, this is not real, obviously. Look, this is not English. These, these are approximations. This is, again, what you would expect AI to do in terms of making whatever they pr put in the prompt. But if someone was like, no, no, it's real. You can buy tickets and everything. They have an address. It's a real company. Look, it's registered. The, the, their registry is registered. And then they are hosting an event. And yeah, the event has said that, yes, this company is throwing an event here. So so it is absolutely real. I'd be like, well, go look at the fact then. What, what are the, and then that would be the point where why didn't you just get a person to write this? You know, you could, again, it wouldn't take that long. I think it might be easier to write out a more legitimate, like frequently asked questions that will actually be able to scam people and pull them in than you could do it through prompts in an AI. It'll take like, this is one of those rare cases where it'll take you more time to think of the prompt, to type into the thing, to get that feedback, to then copy and paste it and put it in here where it doesn't, again, sound human. Like two child carers, two children carers, sorry. So your your ticket gets you a ticket to two adult tickets and two child children carer tickets. Like what? 
Blue light discount. We operate a blue light scheme for members of the NHS and public services workers. Well, that's nice of you. Looking out for the brave nurses and doctors who keep people alive. That's that's very nice. Uh, you can use the code for the 10% discount to be applied when you produce your card or work-related identification. I'm guessing they probably weren't too stringent on that whole making sure that you have like an actual nurse or, or doctor's license, but either way. Uh, I cannot go on the available days. Do you have more dates in the future? Should there be uh, should there be capacity when you arrive? Oh wow, you're expecting full capacity. Then you will be able to enter without any problems. In the event that this is not the case, we ask you to wait a bit. That's not the answer to the question. That seems like the answer that AI prompt might put out to the AI question. <laughs> like, what's your refund exchange? Tickets are not refundable. Yeah, I I, I bet. <laughs> uh, the same question again. I cannot go on the available days. Will you have more dates in the future? And then it's the same answer. No, it's not. Currently, the available dates are those that you can see on our website. However, the chocolate factory is magical. Hey, well, I'm convinced. I mean, I wasn't going to buy the ticket because the whole thing seems gibberish. But uh, apparently, the chocolate factory is magical. So I will buy the ticket now. So more sessions may be available in the future. What is the tickets? Oh, okay. The, I, I was uh, like, you know, felt like I'd been scammed. So once again, was going to ask for the refund. Uh, like I just had right here in the other refund and exchange policy but then it appears the second time i still say it would have been simpler and easier to like scam people organically to think of the like can you not even come up with like what are the kind of questions you think they might frequently ask i'm not sure put that into ai uh well i mean they might ask for exchanges refunds because then we're scamming them after all so that that might be a thing you're right put that into ai again a second time okay it's just like no other frequently asked questions would do that. This already feels like fake as fuck. I like most people at this point probably will have not bought the tickets or going to buy the tickets. Like we're really turning people away. Oh, but there is group discounts for groups of specifically 12 or more people. Discounted tickets can be purchased with the ticket type group access. Uh, does it take place in an indoor or outdoor venue? It will be held indoors. See, this is stunning. This is a, a normal question and answer. Uh, this is about as human as we've gotten. You know, does the event take place in an indoor or outdoor venue? Something a uh, human might ask. And then it's like, it will be, the experience will be held in an indoor venue. Okay. Asked a question, got an answer. You know, is it in suitable environment for children? Well, apparently three years older, even though three-year-olds can't buy tickets because you have to be four. Not consistent. The event contains some interactions that may be unsuitable for children under five years old. Which is it? <laughs> At what age are kids safe to go watch the Oompa Loompa fucking crystal meth cooks? And I, I, like, come on, it changes every time. Can I bring animals? I'm gonna guess no. Animals are not permitted in our experience. Okay, is there a dress code? Casual. Dressing up is encouraged. What safety measures will be taken against COVID-19? We are operating within all government guidelines. Mask wearing is encouraged, but remains optional, and hand sanitizing stations are throughout the experience will receive a fever credit and flexible rescheduling if the event is postponed due to COVID. Cool. Fever is capitalized as well. Uh, so we got information we know about. Uh, that's the location, the experience, and then the contact. So how much for tickets? When I click on tickets. No longer for sale directly. For any inquiries or assistance, kindly fill out the contact form. We typically respond to messages within 24 hours. House of the Illuminati. That part's kind of weird too. All right. Let's go back because I want to show you some photos. So here is... So they actually went through the trouble of, like, making some broken-ass props, putting those up, getting a smoke machine. It's basically like a long hallway. And I, I think there was basically an over-under on this. Like, this is definitely, like like they said here, it's the fire Festival of basically chocolate-like experiences. Um, when ticket holders arrived at the event over the weekend, they found a sparsely decorated warehouse with nothing resembling Charlie and the Chocolate Factory franchise the event invoked in the advertising. It was just ridiculous. I mean, it was just very amateurish. Absolutely nothing like what they described. Uh, they paid 35 pounds. Holy shit, that's about 44.40 US. So 50 bucks Canadian Canadians for this to take your two young kids to the experience. Well, did you not think of going in a group with <laughs> 10 other people? If you found 10 other people to take on the chocolate experience, which apparently is magic. Uh, you could have gotten a discount, a group discount. You would have had to make sure that your children are not three, five, or four. They're not sure. It changes, varying on what question or answer you do. For the sake of my children, we were trying to be happy and smiley so they wouldn't pick up on the disappointment and just tried to make the best of a bad situation. I wonder, were they playing, like, copyright clear music in the background on speakers as well? 
It was that part of it. Outraged. Attendees immediately began posting their experiences online, calling the event underwhelming and a scam. So people quickly likened the event to the infamous Fire Festival, a chaotic and pricey island concert that was advertised as a once in a lifetime musical experience. By Saturday afternoon, the experience had been cancelled, and local police informed to NBC News that they were called to the scene after attendees who felt con began demanding refunds and to further examination. Well, did you not read the frequently asked questions? They did state clearly that there were no refunds available. I mean, they did say that. Uh, and further examination, along with interviews of people hired to work at the event, hints that artificial intelligence generated media may have played a key role in creating its veneer. The event website touted interactive exhibits and images shared on the site couldn't be found elsewhere on the internet through reverse image searches. Some bore known hallmarks of AI creation, most notably strange and nonsensical lettering. Yes, NBC, I, I don't want to help you out on your journalism here. That was AI. Human beings did not paint those pictures and did not write that script. That was clearly generated by AI. It had all the hallmarks, including gibberish. Gib probably the biggest one being gibberish. Again, it feels, and this is the funny thing about the whole, like the closest a robot was getting to approximating what human beings wanted to, like it was trying to human, the like a Mark Zuckerberg esque style, you know, performance. Two actors hired for the event who spoke to NBC News said they were promised 500 pounds to perform in themed costumes that weekend. They said the script they were given appeared AI generated because of the gibberish wording. Please tell me someone's, oh, chats, if anyone has leaked a script, please send it to me. I will read that script, all right? I, I am ready. I will, I will do voices. I will perform. I will give you British accents, everything you want. Get me that script. I want to know what was the AI script. Uh, Michael Archibald said that he had heard the same day that he applied to the acting gig, which was listed on the job's website indeed. When he showed up to rehearsal the day before the event, the warehouse still looked bare bones beyond a few props, and so the costumes weren't delivered until rehearsals were nearly over. Things didn't look that much better when they arrived the next morning. I thought, this is where dreams go to die, he said in the reaction. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this is so incredible. I'm just so happy this happened. I already could feel the embarrassment. I knew the script was AI generated as well. I was like, this isn't normal human writing. <laughs> The event was hosted in London-based com company House of Illuminati, which incorporated just three months ago, according to the UK government agency's Companies House. It describes itself as a realm where fantasy and reality converge to create unparalleled immersive experiences. Like, this in and of itself, it, if it had just been a scam, if it, all that had happened here was that just someone was like, I just basically want to collect people's monies online through the cryptocurrency, so I'm going to set up a fake website, and then maybe spend X amount of money like advertising on YouTube or something until I get shut down. I know I will, but then uh, that's it, and that's the scam. But then they went the extra step. They actually wanted to create the experience just like as as hap like as cheaply, I guess, as possible. Um, but they went through the trouble of actually like hiring actors, giving them AI generated scripts, and then costumes in addition to everything. Like, uh, can I post the link? I have a script. Yes, yes, please. Argonian bum. Some one of the mods, please give Argonian bum uh, permission. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, amazing. Yeah, they were serious. Uh, in the hours after the event's abrupt cancellation, House of Illuminati posted the now-deleted statement on its Facebook page, promising to return the attendees' money. Today has been a very stressful and frustrating day for many. And for that, we are truly sorry. Actually, maybe we should put uh, some chip tunes. Uh, pure Imagination. Oh, thank you, Argonian Bomb. Appreciate it. All right, we have the script. My friends, we have the script. It's happening. Thank you. Uh, go check out Argonian Bum's channel as well. I'll plug Argonian Bum for uh, putting this forward. And uh, yeah, uh, shout out to Skunzian. Uh, Skunzian for the Pure Imagination Willy Wonka chiptune version 8-bit 2A03. And so I'll turn this down. Here we go. Uh, today has been a very stressful and frustrating day for many. And for that, we are truly sorry. Unfortunately, last minute we were let down in many areas of our event and tried our best to continue on the push through and now realize we probably should have canceled the first thing this morning instead. We fully apologize for what has happened and we will be giving full revenge to each and every person who purchased tickets. I also, like, I'm so curious, how did you think you were going to get away with this? Ever since the ongoing explosion of generative AI technology made it easy for internet users to simultaneously create, create web copy and images from text prompts, many sellers and services have begun using AI-generated content in their marketing. Deepfakes to celebrities and influencers advertising certain products have also been circulating in recent months, tricking some potential buyers. 
Paul Connell, another actor hired for the event, said some scenes in the script were absolute nonsense and impossible to replicate without special effects. The actors said the event organizers soon told them to scrap the scripts and just improvise the characters they were supposed to play. All right, all right, you know what? You know what? You guys are pros. Just go off script. Go off script, but just make sure you create a magical chocolate-like experience for child, oh, children carers. So for the children carers, make sure the magical chocolate-like experience has wonder and magic. That's, yes, that's all we ask of you, okay? All right, thanks to Orgonian Brem. Apparently we have the leaked uh, script. So let's just make sure there's nothing sketchy here. Okay. All right, we're ready for the chocolate-like experience. Willy Wonka experience. Script not even close to reality. Hilariously awful. The visuals from the Willy Wonka pop-up attraction in the UK are pretty sad and underwhelming, but the script is even worse and more out of touch with reality. Read the script. I would love to. I don't know who leaked it. Okay, here we go. Wonka doodles. <laughs> I already love this. I already absolutely love this. Wonka doodles. <laughs> All right, we're going to get through this. I can do this, everybody. I was born for this moment. Wonka Doodles at McDuff's Chocolate Factory. A script. Willie McDuff. <laughs> it's just so fucking AI. <laughs> Willie McDuff. Introduction. An audience interaction before entering the Garden of Enchantment. Scene. A whimsical, brightly lit stage that hints at the magic of... <laughs> Scene. A whimsical, brightly lit stage that hints at the magic of the Garden of Enchantment beyond. Willie McDuff, a character with eccentric charm and wit, stands before the curtain as separates the mundane from the magical. The audience is buzzing with, with anticipation. <laughs> I can't even read this. With anticipation. Willie McDuff, with a grandiose flourish. Ladies, gentlemen, and esteemed guests of all ages, welcome. I am Willie McDuff, your humble guide on this journey to extraordinary, the spectacular, and downright magical garden of enchantment. Audience applauds. Willie McDuff. Smiling. Ah, uh, I see we have enthusiasts among us. But before we proceed, a few formalities. Well, not so formal. If I have anything to say about it. He strides downstage, closer to the audience, with a mischievous twinkle in his eye. Nilly. You see, the Garden of Enchantment isn't just any garden. Oh, no! It's a place where the trees whisper secrets of old, the flowers sing in harmony, and the stones. <laughs> Well, they mostly just sit there, but they do it enchantingly. Audience laughs. Now, I must ask, who amongst you has brought their sense of wonder? Show of hands, please. Audience members raise their hands, some enthusiastically, others more timidly, to be expected. Splendid! And who has an extra pack of socks? You know, in case the first pair gets knocked off by sheer amazement. Audience laughs again. A few hands raised. See, at this point, this is where I think, like, as an actor, because you've gotten through the first page, they were doing group readings. And they were each, like, these are professionals. These are people who were hired. And then this was like, you know, okay. It, it's tough being an actor. And it's tough getting a role. And it's tough being hired for a role. So, obviously, after the audition process of which, you know, you've gone through, you get to the cold read. And the cold read is like, you know what? We're doing this. We're putting this together. And even then, you might not have been tipped off, like, that the whole thing is a, a scam. Because you're you're basically supposed to be in an empty room or a warehouse or a theater or something where not everyone is wearing props. There's not a lot of costumes. Like, the whole thing's not set up yet. So, even then, you're probably not fully, like, something's fucked up. But I think after this point, after the first page has been read, and, and <laughs> you recognize very clearly that this is not written by people. Like, human beings did not read this. <laughs> no, I don't know. Dude. Like, I think I would still take the payday. I, if I'm being honest, I would still take the 500 pounds, or was it 400 pounds or something, to do this. Because, yeah, I mean, you're getting paid. Uh, it's not exactly... Like, you can be like, uh, you know... Uh, it's uh, it's a start. Everyone's got to get their start. Everyone's got to get their footing. You know, you're, this could be your big break. You never know. And this could be where you get discovered. There could some someone walking by. It's like, I don't know who plays that Willie McDuff. <laughs> I don't know who is that Willie McDuff, but man, something magical about them. They should, they should be working in film and television. All right. Back to the script. Uh, now, a crucial question. Does anyone here speak fluent squirrel? No? Shame. They're the best conversationalists in the garden. But why not, for I am a certified interpreter of squirrel, duck, and on special occasions, bashful to... <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, this is actually, got, gotta be honest, this is kind of better than the Tim Burton version. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to I would like to see this like actually produced as a film, you know. I I don't know if, if Sora is available yet, you know, for open use, but we could get the the whole Johnny Depp uh Tim Burton version of this because this this I, there is certainly AI generated magic going on here. The audience is visibly amused, but some are leaning in, fully engaged in Macduff's charismatic presence. <laughs> Willie Macduff. Before we embark, I must warn you. The garden has a way of enhancing one's emotions. So if you find yourself inexplicably joyful or suddenly bursting into song, embrace it. It's all part of the enchantment. And now, my dear friends, are you ready to leave the mundane behind and step into a world where the impossible becomes possible, where everything brings a new wonder and where one's only limit is imagination? The audience responds with cheers and applause. Also, there's a lot of expectation being set up by this because I don't think people will find this as enchanting uh, as the, the actors are told, like, you know, there's there's going to be a lot of people who are just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> Does anyone here speak squirrel? I happen to be fluent in tulip. <laughs> what? what are you saying, sir? Like, they, they went as far as getting actors to have to read this out to children. <laughs> then, without further ado, let us proceed. But remember, keep your belongings close, your wits about you, and your socks well secured. They are known to fly off your feet, after all. To the Garden of Enchantment we go! Willie Macduff leads the audience with dramatic gestures towards the curtain, which slowly begins to open, revealing the first glimpse of the Garden of Enchantment as lights and sounds and magical realms spill into the auditorium, ending the scene with a high note of anticipation and excitement. And, uh... Splendid! Who has picked an extra pair of socks? You know, in case the first pair gets knocked off by sheer... Really big on the fact that the socks are just gonna fly off their feet in, in real time. In the Garden of Enchantment with Willie McDuff and the Wonka Doodles. Uh, wait, is this... No, no, this is not looped? Oh. Oh, is that the whole thing? Willie's Chocolate Experience. Oh, these are just different versions of it for different... Oh, so they've basically taken a prompt and then just changed a couple things. Like, okay, prompt it once for the Garden of Enchantment sequence. Prompt it again for... I forget what the other ones were called. So now this one's for the Enchantment... Uh, the Garden of Enchantment scene. Welcome, welcome to the heart of the Garden of Enchantment, a place where wonders never cease and sweets, he gestures towards the Wonka Doodles, are as enchanting as the surroundings. Uh, oh, this is where the Wonka Doodles come in, so they trip over pretend stones, and sweets fly everywhere. It, it seems the stones want a taste of our treat. Careful there, our garden stones are known to be quite the sweet tears. Now, dear guests, feel free to explore, but beware of the giggle grass. It's been known to induce spontaneous laughter. Audience members are encouraged to move around and interact with the set pieces, including the giggle grass, which, when stepped on, triggers hidden speakers to play laughter sounds. <laughs> Did they build the giggle grass? Did they actually, was there any giggle grass? I mean, that one could have been cheap. You could have just gone out, literally touched grass, picked a bunch of grass, gone in and just thrown it on the ground. And be like, oh, beware the giggle grass. Your socks may fly off your feet should you stand on them. Uh, Wonka Doodle number two. It's all that, it's just all that is crash and the wish bang well you gang. They say what I've been saying, you're done when you eat it, you want for you so flat. Willie McDuff, join in on the fun. And if anyone encounters our talking tulips, do you pay them a compliment? They've been a bit wilting lately, and a kind word goes long way. In this garden, audience members engage with the interactive flowers, offering compliments, to which the flowers respond with pre-recorded whimsical thank yous. Thank you. Thank you. Wonka Doodle 1. If you see a butterfly, wish me your sweetest dreams. Do <laughs> it. There are official secret capers in the dream. <laughs> I can't believe this happened. I can't believe this fucking It just goes on and on. Scene before entering to the dark and mysterious Twilight Tunnel. So this is for the Twilight Tunnel. The, the orbs are not only our light, but our promise to each other that no matter how dark the path, we find our way through together. And remember, the Twilight Tunnel, we're not just finding the light, it's about finding courage within ourselves. 
I went, did they do a single complete playthrough? Because I know eventually, like, people were complaining, so they told them to go off script. Like, they, they were like, hey, by the way, it's totally fine. You guys are pros. Improvise. You guys, you, I, I, we're not saying you have to go method with it. Like, you don't have to perpetually act as the characters themselves. If you want to be Willie McDuff on your own time, that's up to you. If you want to be a Wonka Doodle on your own time, that's also up to you. Uh, the Twilight Tunnel with Willie McDuff. The Unknown. Who's the Unknown? <laughs> who who here is playing the Unknown? You were cast as the Unknown. You're the Unknown. And the Anti-Graffiti Gobstopper. <laughs> the Anti-Graffiti Gobstopper. <laughs> My word. <laughs> Deep within the Serpentine. Serpentine Pathways of the Twilight Tunnel. The atmosphere grows tense as Willie McDuff gathers the audience in a semicircle. His face is illuminated by the flickering light of the lantern, casting long shadows on the walls. The group's laughter and whispers fade as Willie begins to speak in a grave tone. Oh, now he's serious. My dear adventurers, we stand on the precipice of discovery, most wondrous and perilous, for within these ancient walls lurks a tale not yet told of an evil chocolate maker known only as the unknown. He is known only as the unknown deep the audience leans in captivated by willie's words i think at this point like you would be getting booze and cheers or maybe some wine mums would be fucking decking you like i don't think you would ever be able to get to this point in the script the eighth page impossible i don't think it like i i think at a certain point someone would be like what the fuck is this no no stop saying things shut the fuck up what is this gibberish what is wrong with you? I want my money back. I want my fucking money back. I'm going to kill all of you. Like, seriously, why are you still talking? <laughs> Willie McDuff suddenly freezing. It's like, it wouldn't be like a murmur of amusement. Agreement ripples throughout the audience. Like, oh, 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 oh yes. Oh, yeah. It seems the socks have left my feet in amazement. The unknown. Oh, no. Uh, Willie McDuff and his band of intrepid explorers. You have something I desire, and your unwitting aid it shall be mine. The anti-graffiti ghost. <laughs> Impossible. Dare I, I, I do not think they ever made it to page eight. There's no fucking way. There's, there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> like you would have to smoke so much giggle grass to be okay with this with your goddamn kids with your kids to sit there and be, what, are, what is this nightmare where am i stop for the love of god stop what are you saying ah the anti graffiti gob stopper will no longer clean your worlds it will turn them into chaos it's my command you there yes you will assist me in acquiring this precious suite. Together, we shall rewrite the rules of cleanliness and order. As the unknown extends a hand towards audience members, the room suddenly brightens as Willie McDuff unfreezes, shaking his head as if disoriented. It's like, did you? What Peter Pan feels like there was some of this was stolen from like a Peter Pan theatrical experience. You know, like you have to believe in Tinkerbell. Come on, kids, don't be sad. Only you have the power. Willie McDuff confused. What happened? Did anyone else here feel chill? He looks around, feigning ignorance of the unknown's presence. You all look as if you've seen a ghost. Or perhaps you're feeling a bit whitey? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not making that up. Whitey? <laughs> White. Oh, uh, this is definitely the funniest thing of 2024 so far. So far, it can't be topped, okay? And I, I gotta say, this this is maybe changing my mind on AI. <laughs> I mean, so long, it's, as long as people are willing to use it to bring whimsy and, and delight and secrets into the world. new terms and phrases, white to <laughs> Perhaps you're just feeling a bit white and mean. <laughs> Laughter breaks the tension. Well, that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm glad at this point if, if 
parents, if parents are still there and then they're still willing to stand there in awe and silence, this is nine pages in, by the way. Like I've skipped a lot. It would, I, I, I'd say time wise, in order to perform this properly, it would take some time. I do feel though that this does need to be again realized their vision. Uh, I, I, I think like at a certain point, maybe for charity, you know, if we're fundraising for something, we could be like, uh, we're going to perform live to, to fundraise for very worthy cause, and uh, in order to do that, we're going to perform. Uh, uh, the sensational script, <laughs> McDuff and the Wackadoodles, or whatever it's called. Willie McDuff and the Wackadoodles. <laughs> You're not my friends. For the power of imagination and good cheer can dispel even the darkness of shadows. And let's continue our journey with our hearts and lights undimmed. And the great thing is, it's clearly the same prompts being done like six, six times over. They're like, people might get on to us if we just do one, like, experience. They'll need a few. To be truly sold and, and to get their money's worth their money being fifty dollars by the way so if they're willing to give and part with fifty dollars we need to give them something more than just one what about six and yeah just just copy and paste the whole thing and then well we might need a villain yeah there's something unknown with oh yeah okay so that and the graffiti gobstopper remover transition to bubble and lemonade room i feel like the imagination is running a little dry at this point you know Speaking of light spirits, I find myself quite parched in our unexpected adventure, but fortune smiled upon us just for... This is a lot of lines to learn, by the way. I'm just saying, this is a lot of AI gibberish for one actor who played Willie McDuff. I'll show you photos, by the way. We have the real Willie McDuff, uh, so you can see what the costumes look like. Then there's scene from the Imagination Lab and McDuff TV. Ah, well, I guess clearly copying parts of the actual movie. The McDuff TV camera... Willie the Unknown, the Anti-Graffiti Gobstopper Showdown. Okay, so this is the, the, the great culmination. Uh, the Unknown, stumbling, caught in a sparkling wave. No, my plans thwarted by tidiness. The guest cheers. The Unknown is gently swept up by a robotic vacuum. Humorously <laughs> in the garden. By the way, th apparently the cast complained because they recognized that it would be literally impossible perform the script as it is like it's one thing to be like and so that's when the, <laughs> they step on the giggle grass and the giggle grass will make all these sounds and stuff okay uh, i mean it, it to make this look nice and, and be good it will be a bit expensive but i it, you can do this you could also do it cheaply i mean if you want to be really budget with it if you just literally collect grass from outside a lot and then you just like pour it on the ground and then you maybe have like a cassette player you can get them for like six or seven dollars on amazon that is playing a loop uh so it's not exactly like when you step on it there's a sensor that triggers it but sure we could do that right but when you get to this point where there's this epic battle between the anti-graffiti gobstopper the un known and Willie McDuff in order to save basically imagination itself and you have things like a massive vacuum appears that uh, suddenly sucks them all up into it. <laughs> and you're like so how are we gonna do this like you would ask that question I know I would I, mean, <laughs> I was here I was like how, how like are you guys did do you have any of these props yet can we see them can we can we because like we're gonna have to do we act this out do you want me to pretend is it kind of like miming it am I like whoa and stuff like that and someone is like I am the giant vacuum or something like that or do you, do you want is, are you going to cut to a video will you have like a screen or is there a lot of smoke and I disappear or something like that like goddamn, Willie McDuff addressing the audience and so my friends we see that even in the face of darkness in the light of imagination joy and a bit of clever cleaning can prevail let us remember the greatest adventure and the most enduring victories are those we achieve together the room lights up returning to its vibrant state as willie offers a, bow, uh, a bow uh, sorry a bow the anti-graffiti gobstopper safely in hand the guests are up into applause celebrating the triumph of creativity and, and courage over chaos the scene ends with willie mcduff and the guests uh, reveling in the success of their imaginative endeavor reinforcing the power of unity and the endless possibilities lie within the realms of imagination and innovation like even the lesson is fucking AI gibberish. Like, what, what what lesson? That we need to be clean of our whiteness? <laughs> What's that? Because, like, the anti-graffiti gobs... <laughs> I, I, I don't know if they were... Like, is it actually something that's anti-graffiti? Is, is it just, like, you don't want graffiti on the walls? Why is this about cleanliness out of nowhere? Why is that the lesson we're taking away from this, you know? And, and like, people are shocked and scared by the unknown, which fair dues, right? That does make sense. <laughs> but even then, at that point, it's like, oh, you f I feel like you've seen a ghost. Or uh, you turned a little white to tea or whatever that was. <laughs> like... I 
I just have so many questions. More questions than I have answers. And I've now read the script almost in its entirety, not the whole thing. The 13-page script where the actors were given to perform at the now viral Willie's Chocolate Experience in Glasgow, Scotland and service online. And if you thought the actual experience itself looked rough, wait until you get a load of the fake plot line behind it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. You know how we're having all this discourse about work and jobs that you hate and shit like that? And, you know, started by maybe uh, everyone getting mad at Hassan and all that kind of stuff. I've had this job many times over. I've made that face. I, I felt that way. You know, like this is a fucking vibe. This this right here encapsulates, I, I would say, basically if one image can, can tell just like a collective feeling, uh, what is it, uh, the zeitgeist, capture the zeitgeist in a single frame, this could be it right now for all of us, I would say. We're all just fed the fuck up. You know, every single day that you get the news and all these horrifying atrocities are going down and you're just watching politicians not listen to the will of the people and you're just like, fuck you, fuck you. And the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, just a disproportionate amount of wealth and greed accumulate. Like all of that captured in a single fuck you image. This right here, this is 2024. This is just like, this is how I feel a lot of the time. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. <laughs> it's just being captured in this moment where you're getting fucking exploited in real time and you know what it? it's just something's wrong you know you can tell just something is off they can't lie to you anymore like you've just broken down like no more we were not our consent cannot be manufactured we're seeing horrifying shit all the time because we now have the technology you gave us too much power you gave us too much power and in your infinite greed you were trying to accumulate all this vast amount of wealth and so you have proliferated all these cheap consumable products that we all know how so we can see through the fucking lies but we're still stuck in it we're still stuck in there. We're still, we're still like that oompa loompa, you know, tragically cooking crystal meth in front of children and just wondering, what did I do with my life? <laughs> you know, <kind> of like, <laughs> like, holy shit. Uh, you have pictures of it? Oh, I would love to see. I would love to see some video. Hold on. Hello, my name is Paul Connell. I was one of the actors who played Willy Wonka at. Thank you. Thank you. I like I need to know as much as I can about this story. I need to I need to get behind the scenes. And and now we have Willy Wonka himself. Sorry. Willie McDuff. We got <laughs> Willie McDuff for for copyright purposes. We have to be we have to be accurate about this. Willie McDuff. At the Willy Wonka chocolate experience fiasco that happened uh, in Glasgow this weekend. And I was wondering if some in video of the unknown. Yes, we get to see the unknown. Help me. <laughs> I have a contract here. Oh, I'm so uh, happy. I'm not very good with legal speak, so I was hoping someone could help me interpret this. Um, but under pay, uh, in the small print there, it, it says, um, You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. <laughs> so if someone could just let me know what that means, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. That was, that was a pretty good Gene Wilder. That was, that, was, that was definitely a good Gene Wilder. Here's the part with the unknown. New details on the Willy Wonka experience disaster. Script was 15 pages of AI generated gibberish. The made up like all the other. This is the other way. Yes. Oh, man. Humans rock. I'm sorry. Human beings rock. What is that? <laughs> Oh, uh, it's not all bad. The world, you know, it's not not all bad. <laughs> uh, it still surprises you, you know. There's still moments. What is that? <laughs> it's the end of <laughs> And props to you for like you know giving it your all. You know, you're this is a performance. What? <laughs> and what is that? <laughs> what dare I say? Do I see before me? <laughs> what? Is that? Um. Hello everyone, my name is Paul Connell and I was one of the actors employed to play Willy Wonka at the Wonka's Chocolate Experience fiasco that happened uh, in Glasgow this weekend. Um, I'm going to be poking a little bit of fun at the event, but I wanted to say before I start that I feel for anyone who bought tickets to this 
event um people who oh it's not your fault magical chocolate experience uh, and got me yeah okay please uh, in no way do i blame any of the performers for for this absolute disaster Th- this is the mind uh of the what is it the house of the illuminati they're the only ones to blame the, the ones who had uh you know insidious intentions and wanted to scam a bunch of children and parents out of money uh by doing like this the fire festival of chocolatey experiences they're the ones who you know should be ridiculed and stuff like that you you have brought magic to the world, sir. All right. The, the the fact that you were a performing actor in this train wreck, again, I, I I'm in awe of this whole thing. In a top hat in a dirty warehouse in Glasgow, um, people who wanted Timothy Chalamet and got Timothy Charlatan. Um, but I am going to tell kind of my side of it as an actor who was employed at this event. So the first red flag for me was when I was cast as Willy Wonka. Um, <laughs> anyone who looks at me and thinks Willy Wonka and not Umpa Lumpa is out of their mind. I give off major Umpa Lumpa energy. Um, I can see. I can see. Willy Wonka's come in many forms. All right, if we've learned nothing from all the Willy Wonkas at this point. You know, I, I didn't think that we would be seeing everything from Johnny Depp to Timmy Chalamet, and of course Gene Wilder, the the goat by by and far. But yeah, the, I'm I'm open to a, a Willy Wonka, a, a many no, but not like a good Impalumpa, not like one of the, like like one that's at the back during the dance numbers, like falling over like your aunt at a line dancing class on holiday. Um, but I got cast as the part on the Thursday um, and was told that I needed to learn the script for the Friday so I said no problem send it over the script was 15 pages monologue pretty much of AI generated gibberish (laughs) um, which it's it's a really long script to learn so, I don't know if any of you have ever like performed. I was in uh, a, a course, uh, a Shakespeare course, I, I might add, where we had to learn a Shakespeare script. I had to learn Taming of the Shrew. And it was the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life in terms of memory recall because it's just not a way I speak. I do not speak in Shakespearean yield English. So to be able to, or to have to memorize lines, it got so bad that I obviously, I cheated. I And I, I'm probably telling myself here, but I, I was, uh, I had like the beginning and the end fully memorized, but there were other parts that I hid inside a basket uh because like i knew i was going to get to a point where i would just like not be able to remember those lines and so like i would just like be glancing down at the basket to try and like read the other ones that like the teacher fully knew and that that was one of the things i got deducted points for but i did good enough on i think the start and the end but it's fucking hard i couldn't imagine a 15 page script of which is majority him like he he's the lead he's he's by and far the main character of this entire story and the one who has to like bring everyone through all this magical experience from like different display to different display and sell it he's got to sell it like he he brings them basically to stations which as you can see are <laughs> kind of speak for themselves and then has to be like oh behold before you what do you see oh it's the unknown I will read some for you if you want. In fact, no, I don't even need to read it because I learnt it all and it was it was mad. I've learnt all of it. That's all in there. That's in my brain. Um, so I'll give you one of the lines from the script. Uh, I'm not going to do the Willy Wonka voice because I think I've embarrassed Aww. myself enough no. uh, over the last few days. Um, but one of my favourite lines was, there is a man who lives here. His name is not known. So we call him the unknown. (laughs) The unknown is an evil chocolate maker (laughs) who lives in the walls. (laughs) What? This is so incredible. <laughs> it's it's just so just tinkly, horribly bad AI writing. And they manifested it into reality. Like it's been created. 
you know how Binder, Matt Binder is always talking about the feedback loop? He's like, at a certain point, he's like, generative AI requires human beings to create the content that it is data harvesting on. And so it, if it continuously data harvests, but then starts to data harvest on the content that it itself produces, it breaks down and it just starts becoming more and more gibberish, which is like, yeah, it's true because the whole thing is an approximation. It's trying its best. Like that's what AI, generative AI is doing. It's a like a letter approximator, as in this letter goes after this letter and in this order, it's going to get as close to what I think you were asking me to produce before you and get really good at that. And I'm going to continuously, you know, absorb as much information as possible to continue doing this thing that feels like a magic trick to you in that you're having a conversation with something that is hyper intelligent. That's how the whole thing works. And so in this case, the laziness and greed of a human, by the way, combined with that. And you can tell because like they clearly just took the same thing and kept on feeding it back with little teeny additions to the or like changes to the prompt. Like, OK, uh, add in villain arc uh add in super villain uh add in life lesson uh the, and then it's like uh the graffiti gobstopper hates bad things that are not clean and you become white to tea uh if you see him and so then the graffiti gobstopper like that's how the whole thing happened and then they actually went through with it like that's the next part like that's the next layer where like this wouldn't have been <laughs> nearly as amazing as it was had they not actually gone through all the trouble of hiring cast and crew buying props setting the experience up selling tickets getting people to go <laughs> <laughs> what what is an evil chocolate maker for a start is it a, does he make evil <laughs> oh, oh 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 uh, nestle 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 N nestle yeah them them oh uh also uh for distributors mr beast that that, that there's another uh, example for you chocolate or is he an evil man who makes chocolate and what do you mean he lives in the walls? So I had to perform that line with uh, with with gusto and 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 Hell yeah. validity. Hell yeah! Um, and that was that was a challenge as, as an actor. <laughs> you know, you know what else was? Whoever played the unknown, because you know, there's not a lot of guidance. I I, I almost wish, uh, you know, that I I could have heard from the director of all this. I was the director in on it. I don't know if the director gets to be unscathed unless they hired someone. Uh, but if they, if the director was one of the organizers, like then okay, then you're you're a piece of shit. If not, that could have been amazing. Being like, all right, we need you, we need to hire you to direct this play, if you will, an interactive experience, a magical one at that. And then it's like, okay, so let's see the script. Let's do that. Let's sit down. Like, what's my motivation? that for for the unknown we don't know yeah that's the, the beauty of the unknown we then um look we we turned up as a group of actors um in the morning on the saturday and saw what this was um <laughs> you could say it was a it was a world of imagination in that you had to imagine <laughs> it was not a dirty old warehouse <laughs> um, but we walked around this place and saw there he um, is. <laughs> just health and safety nightmare for us. Um, Wait, is this Lemonade Land? This is like the end. This is where the conclusion, the final battle takes place. <laughs> just a bunch of gaps. Oh no. <laughs> uh, what is oh yeah, we've already seen that. Kids were given a single jelly bean and a cup of lemonade. That's right. It was creepy as hell. It scared the crap out of the kids who witnessed it. Bottom line, the execution of the script didn't turn out great. But to be honest, the actual writing itself wasn't very good either. The whole thing is disjointed and somewhat hard to follow. It sounds like it manifested in the real world when they tried to bring it to life. Remember, parents complained to their kids were given a quarter cup of lemonade and a few jelly beans. They were piled onto crappy decorations. The whole thing took a minute to walk through. Yeah. Uh, everything about the event is so grim, it's almost funny. Seriously, if you need a good laugh, read through the script. It's pretty wild. I, I did. It was it was phenomenal. I did absolute magic. We saw... There was no special effects that was promised. There was a thing that was supposed to be called the Twilight Tunnel, which was supposed to be a tunnel that, um, like, like a, a tunnel that everyone walked through that was like dark, but there's supposed to be stars like twinkling inside it and stuff like that, which I thought could have been quite cool. Um, what it was was um, a bunch of checkered <laughs> flags uh, pinned to a wall with some mirrors that were that were found. I don't know where, maybe probably the toilets. Um, so that was that was a, a letdown. Anyway, we all got together as actors, and we were like, "Look, it is unlikely that we're going to get paid for this event. Um, mm. However, they're going to put this event on with or without us, um, and children are going to be coming through. Let's 
but let's just stick around. Let's do our best to make sure that the children have some kind of um, experience. And um, and all the all the actors who worked on it were, you know, are very very nice, um, lovely people. So. Billy Cool is the man behind this. He has previously made AI for Vax conspiracy books. What? Oh my god, this just goes deeper and deeper. It's like an endless fucking rabbit hole. Huckster behind the Willy Wonka event has sold an AI written vaccine conspiracy books. Parents are raging at Billy Cool over a botched children's event in Glasgow. Yeah, Glasgow, sorry. He's got a scammy Amazon business. Customers, some of whom traveled from far and waited in a long line with their children, were incensed enough to call the police after Billy's chocolate experience turned out to be a ripoff, and the organizer, Billy Cool, hastily closed it down Saturday afternoon. Um, what's his AI? Oh, here's some photos we haven't seen. Need to see deeper inside the rabbit hole here. I love that they have a photo of the AI-generated images, and they just put that on a wall. It's like, hey, come to this magical experience. And then it's like, well, it's literally what you saw. You know, I mean, you were told you would get this image and you got the image. We printed the image out. What more do you want? This is probably from like a party store. Oh, that's the entrance. You walk through this. <laughs> Again, it's like, how did you think you were going to get away with this? Like, I I'm so happy they half-assed it. It's, it's, it's like... You, you, you could have either done nothing and been like, this was just to save money. The whole thing's a scam. You could have done a lot to try and get away with it. To, you go to the dollar store and buy as much stuff as possible. Just decorate every corner. It's cheap, but it's still, we, we did it. We, we're not. Or this, the nightmare fuel, you know, kind of this uncanny valley. Uh, you only got this far, but just enough for it to be really scary. Like really horrifyingly creepy and scary. <laughs> and good on the actors to be like, like this is this train has left the station. People have bought tickets. Kids are going to be here tomorrow. Maybe we shouldn't like it could be endangerment to them. We, we should at least try and like not have them be traumatized by this by pretending to be magical or their enjoyment. You know, um, cool who did not return for a re uh, request for comment seems to be the sole employee of the House of Illuminati, one of several companies he has registered. It incorporated in November. The company did not respond for a request for comment. The House of the Illuminati website, like Willie's Chocolate Experience website, is packed with AI-generated art advertising and unparalleled immersive experiences such as mystic galas and enchanted retreats. The description of the company and supposed events are themselves almost certainly written by an AI chatbot, according to analysis by the detection tool GPT-0. The text uh, also says that. So yeah, the mystical galas, avant-garde art, interactive since the Wonka fiasco like you're so lazy that clearly this is like this is what you want to do you want to either grift people or maybe he's I don't know bought like his own experience like he thinks this is legitimately an actual magical enchantment or, or something to that um, but he's willing to go this far but not willing enough to write or hire a writer like too cheap or too lazy to do like the bare minimum to be able to like not have people immediately see this and be like yeah this is not made by humans like human beings didn't make this enter a world of grandeur and secrecy at our mystique galas these events are a fusion of high society elegance and intriguing performances featuring mask ballroom dances enigmatic storytelling and live classical music yes all, all things that are found in mysterious and mystical galas now those words are together in a sequence that is describing again what a mystical gala would sound like were a robot to describe it right He's a QAnon conspiracy theorist. So he, he's been grifting QAnoners for a while, I guess. Um, while deleting much of the material that would lead internet sleuths from the wonky incident to these earlier projects, Cool has perhaps surprisingly not shut his entirely AI-spound House of Illuminati business. The company's Facebook page continues to promise refunds while customers say they've gotten their money back. Neither has pulled down his Instagram account, which contains only a few hyping independently published books available on Amazon. These include titles such as Selling Innocence, a novel about a human trafficking survivor, that just grifting the far right is what's happening here. I mean, maybe it's a hero up until the fact that they started endangering kids. Uh, these titles include Selling Innocence, a novel about human trafficking survivors who navigates a treacherous landscape filled with politicians, clergymen, celebrities, and billionaires. The language hints at themes of QAnon conspiracy theorists and uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Selling Innocence, Rose Black, Rosie Black's Escape from Hell, all probably AI generated. I mean, the pictures, the book, everything, it's still up. Clearly written by AI. AI uh, write uh, a you know SEO optimized Instagram uh, picture description of a book about like that's the, that's the prompt and this is exactly why the emotes and everything came out here. There's hashtags already there. 
The 16 books on Cool's Amazon author page were all published in the summer 2023. Uh, oh, I think I've seen this one. Yeah, Operation Inoculation. I've just seen this photo before. Um, so that's how he used to make money. So that's how he made money to support a lot of this, like, grift, I guess. Uh, like, to, to set up the Willy Chocolate experience. So we stuck around. We um, did our best with with what we had, which was which was very little. Um, repeatedly as well, like the script. Um, just to, to backtrack, the script had a moment where I was supposed to um, suck up the unknown with a giant uh, vacuum cleaner, and I asked about that, and the people uh, running the event were like, "We we don't know what to do with that. Just just." improvise that i can't i can't improvise a vacuum cleaner i i either have oh sorry yeah. muted um i i had questions that i'm getting answers i'm happy because that was one of the things i was like is it were you supposed to mime the whole thing were you supposed to pretend did you have to act like the whole thing was like oh i'm getting sucked up by the great unknowns you know gibbity gobstopper uh, vacuum machine have a vacuum cleaner or you don't have a vacuum cleaner that's the two rules of of having a vacuum cleaner and we didn't have a vacuum cleaner so I uh, made the creative decision to to cut that right out of the script. So I was I was told that I would um, every forty five minutes would get a fifteen minute break. Um, that that didn't happen. I I was playing Willy Wonka for for nearly four hours straight. Wow, having to do this gibberish for four hours in a row. <laughs> but I was given a lunch break. I went on to my lunch break. Uh, I sat in my Makes car, sense. to be honest, and just stared into the void for a little while. Uh, and then when I came back in, that's when things had got a little bit out of control. Um, rightfully so, people were furious. They were shouting. There was people filming things on their phone. Uh, there was there was things being broken, things being stolen, apparently. Oh, okay, well, hold on. We have footage of that, too. We paid money. So, what's, what's your name? Right, there's children here, and don't walk away then. No, this is this is illegal. This is illegal what he's are doing. Come on, right, you said you're here to represent. You're here to represent a company that's taking money off his parents, grandparents. For children. So, we are going to start to As I said, we are going to start to rush you. So, we find us from Monday morning. Thank you. Right, so, where, where, where's my guarantee? Come on, be a man, Uppa. Are you not saying anything? Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I would probably uh, be pretty fucking furious, to be honest. <laughs> well, I, I mean, knowing now what I know, I actually really wish I would have been able to see this. Uh, like, I think, again, we need to recreate this entire experience and, and, and uh, for charity, obviously. We could fundraise some money. Currently, um, I, I just walked into this after my lunch. Um, oh, no, Willy Wonka is not in the public domain. I, I don't believe so, right? I could be wrong on that. But uh, either way, the, the, they intentionally are trying to skirt that by not calling it Willy Wonka. They called it Willy's. It was like Willy's chocolate experience or something like that. And he, he wasn't Willy Wonka. He was Willy McDuff and the Wonka Doodles. Uh, they, they, yeah, they weren't Oompa Loompas. They were the Wonka Doodles. Yeah, so it's all, it's all above board. And was was told to hide, <laughs> which I was like, "What has happened?" Uh, so I was interviewed on the news um, yesterday, which I was more than happy to do because I thought, "Well, this will be an opportunity for me to kind of stick up for the group of actors who were also scammed by this event." Uh, in the interview, I talked about how we turned up we'd we'd worked out that we're probably not going to get paid for this event but we will we'll, we'll stick around anyway um because we know that they're going to put it on without us kids are coming through let's at least try and make something of a nice experience for the the children and families who are coming through then i said on the interview i i feel like an idiot 
to be honest. Um, I feel like I've I've kind of been taking the mick out of. Uh, message on. Like I said, I, that sounds to me in my read on this whole situation that they did a noble thing. Like once you were that far gone, you all collectively as actors were like, we're not going to pay for this. This isn't real, is it? No, it's not. But there's a lot of kids coming tomorrow. There's a lot of tickets sold. There's a lot of parents. I mean, should we just let them wander around in an empty warehouse with like, you know, 10 random props and perhaps some like, you know, dubious candy and, and lemonade? And it's like, no, I mean, there's like, we should try and at least not have the kids be traumatized by this. So let's let's do as as good as we can and do make believe and all that kind well, of stuff. The actress was like, don't worry, I've, I've defended Class all act. the news. Uh, the, the news edited that interview, and what happened was, um, last night at 6 o'clock, was the guy at the studio saying, OK, now let's speak to Paul Connell, one of the actors who was at the event. It cuts to me going, I feel like an idiot, to be honest, and back to the studio. So that was good. Um, I, I would like to finish this video by saying that I hope that the people who went there did get something out of it, um, other than one jelly bean and a quarter gla glass of uh, lemonade. One um, jelly bean. Who thought this was a good idea? The one jelly bean really gets me. These are the images of the Willie's Chocolate Experience website showing dreamlike candy-colored images and promises of extraordinary props. Mm -hmm. Folks paid 35 pounds per ticket or $44.40. When families arrived, this is what they found. Oh. Wait, we've seen the photos. Someone has video. I'll find that. <laughs> so unreal it gets to me. It's it's all so haunting. This one's awesome too. I love that it's an actual printout of an AI generated image and then it's just hung on the wall. <laughs> so this one has a couple just pipes, I guess. <laughs> like, I just I love they only went like an eighth of the way. And then not at all, <laughs> but that's it. It would not have worked if you went all the way or not at all, but they went like an eighth of the way. <laughs> okay, we have two big pipes, big book. <laughs> Magic! <laughs> Hawk board. Do we have any more performances? I think I think I've almost exhausted how much I can laugh about this. My my face hurts. Oh, this is the unknown. We've already seen the unknown. Yeah, I know. We were looking at the website earlier. It's so funny. <laughs> oh no. We can only know that we don't know the unknown. Uh, it looked like a meth lab. <laughs> what was billed as an immersive experience seemingly inspired by Willy Wonka movies turned into the Fire Fest of unofficial movie tie-ins. <laughs> the photos are almost too good to be true. I agree. Oh, this is, a, this is a great tweet, by the way. The Oompa Loompa from the knockoff Wonka Land experience looks like she's running a literal meth lab and is seriously questioning the life choices up until this point. If you scripted this, I would say it was too on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Police were called to the immersive event. <laughs> I'm going to call a fucking court show you what the fuck is. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it was labeled as a farce. Uh, yeah, it certainly was. Um, I, I would say uh, it is a magical thing that happened. Uh, we're also going to talk about another magical thing that happened that actually is a lot more important than I really should. So. .org, the War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman in New York, joined by Democracy Now! co-host Juan Gonzalez in Chicago. Hi, Juan. Hi, Amy, and welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. We begin today's show in Michigan, where President Joe Biden won the Democratic primary Tuesday, but faced a significant backlash over his support for Israel's assault on Gaza. Biden won about 81 percent of the vote. But over 100,000 voters, or more than 13 percent, cast their ballots for uncommitted. 
In recent weeks, the group Listen to Michigan urged Democrats to vote uncommitted to pressure Biden to call on Israel to end its assault on Gaza. Organizers of the campaign had said they were hoping for 10,000 uncommitted votes, pointing to Donald Trump's win of less than 11,000 votes in 2016 to show the significance of that number. Tuesday's vote shows they got 10 times that amount. Michigan is the first major battleground state in the general election to hold its primary. It's also home to one of the largest Arab American populations in the country. Top White House officials visited Michigan earlier this month to meet with Arab and Muslim leaders after a number of them refused to meet with Biden's campaign manager. The movement to vote uncommitted will likely spread to other states. Organizers of the movement are holding a call with supporters in Minnesota, which will vote next week, and Washington State, which holds its primary. Uh, thank you for 12. subscribing. For uh, poker 158149. Appreciate you. Arab Adrian American. Vixen, good to see you. Everyone Excuse check out Adrian Vixen's opinion. channel. Everyone goes check out Argon Eden Bums channels as well. Uh, people it's are in the chat. Pakistan today is oh, and I think the Anarchy was here too. Go check out Anarchy as well. Did you Base, base, He's base. joining us from Utica, New York. We're also joined by former Democratic Congress member from Michigan, Andy Levin. He's joining us from Southfield, Michigan. I don't see a joining button. Oh, so at the bottom, I think of the, I, forget, I can't remember where. It's like, uh, besides subscribe, there's the option to join. It's one of the two. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! You're a former Congress member, Andy Levin. You're also a former synagogue president. Talk about this uncommitted campaign. For every six votes President Biden got yesterday in the primary, uncommitted got one. Talk about the organizing effort and what message that you hope that those who supported uncommitted like yourself uh, sent to President Biden. Well, good morning, Amy and everyone. I don't have much of a voice left, so sorry about that. Um, it was really an incredible thing, Amy. You know, I've been organizing. So if you don't know the story or don't know the background of it, it's actually pretty phenomenal. There was a protest vote yesterday in Michigan. Michigan, of course, is a swing state, and it's necessary for Joe Biden to win the presidency and defeat Donald Trump, the orange man, who is bad, I'm told. And so because orange man bad, and you often hear this from libs, you often hear liberals uh, be you know, completely fine with a lot of the war crimes of presidents if they're democratic presidents or if they're liberal presidents or prime ministers. You know, the same thing that libs in Canada love uh, Justin Trudeau. Uh, you know, he's done some bad things. I don't agree with everything he does, but ultimately, yes, we do love Justin Trudeau. He's uh, uh, restoring, uh, making Canada great again kind of shit, right? Um, but they'll be completely fine with some horrifying atrocities, uh, some, uh, such as, you know, what is occurring right now uh, in Gaza and the genocide of Palestinians. And they will actually, uh, you know, try and justify a lot of what is happening or, you know, the strategic alliances that uh, the U.S. has with Israel and, and everything that's done, even though the rest of the world is, you know, and I would say the, the rest of the populace, a lot of uh, Democrats uh, themselves, there's a lot of good libs. There's a lot of libs who are outraged. A lot of libs who who woke up, a lot of libs who who saw what had happened. Uh, look at you know everything from the John Olivers, the John Stewarts. You know they'll 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 say that this is absolutely uh, atrocious. This is certainly uh, you know they won't use the word genocide. That's true, but um, they will they will oppose it. They will demand a ceasefire. They they will say no, not in our name, kind of stuff uh, as well, and then protests and all, all these great uh, things for sure. Um, but there are other people who are blood thirsty monsters uh, who are completely fine with supporting, again, the the, the, uh, the far right uh, regime of Benjamin Netanyahu and what he's doing uh, and the genocide of Palestinians. And so in Michigan, a state that has a very large Arab and Muslim population, uh, they were critical in helping Joe Biden defeat Donald Trump in the last election. Uh, I believe of the registered voters who are Arab or Muslim American, uh, 155,000 of them uh, voted for Joe Biden in Michigan. They helped swing Michigan uh, once again uh, for the Democrats. Uh, and also Donald Trump defeated Hillary Clinton in Michigan by about 10,000, 10,477 votes around there. Um, that's a very, very small amount of votes. And so you'll often get this condescension from people who are like, hey, by the way, it's very privileged of you to not vote for Joe Biden 
Why? You, you, you're against what's happening? You're calling him Genocide Joe and all this kind of stuff? Well, did you know that he's going to put you and all the rest of the Muslims uh, into, like, buses and ship you out? Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Uh, Donald Trump is going to destroy society. Uh, so that's why you have to vote for Joe Biden no matter what. And a lot of people rightfully are disgusted by Joe Biden right now, even though a lot of them, I'm sure, like, when eight months in the future, if the choice comes down to Joe Biden or Donald Trump, most likely they will. But they like just the, the condescension itself of being able to be, like, you know, vote blue no matter who, vote blue no matter who, vote blue no matter who, just vote, just vote. You want to change the world, just vote. I'm not against voting, by the way. I'm not against participating in democracy. I quite like democracy. I, I think it's good. I would rather have a democratic process, even though I don't think we have a true one under capitalism, but that's another story for another day. But yes, absolutely, I think you should vote. But I think it's like, it's a tool in your tool set. You got a lot of tools. There's a lot of things you can do, right? And I think there's more important things that you should and can do as well. You know, things like getting directly involved in, say, direct action, or perhaps uh, working for a feeding program or a food program or something like that in your local area, uh, volunteering or organizing or uh, forming a union, yeah, organizing and democratizing your workplace very very important shit uh if a lot more people had a lot more freedom and a lot more money and a lot more job security uh and better health care for example better education all that kind of stuff society will be better it's just better for everybody you know it's 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 good that that, that the whole system works out so long story short michigan of the ten thousand or so votes that donald trump won that state with um joe biden was helped by arab and muslim americans who are now disgusted by him and they wanted to make their voices heard and in this primary election of which yes joe biden won they wanted to demonstrate by voting specifically for uncommitted so voting for uncommitted uh, you know uncommitted was registered as someone you could vote for uh and then using that as a protest vote to show hey by the way i bet you we could show you that we still are you know ready to not vote for joe biden if you continue to support israel so the choice is yours now all right. You can choose. You, We are a democracy. We, we are going to vote. And this is how we are voting if you continue to support Israel. And so now the choice for libs, because the whole thing has been flipped and they're very upset about this and they're all getting really, really mad because they say all the time, just vote. That's like that's the biggest thing that you can potentially do in terms of your political activism is, is that and that alone. Right. So the libs want you to just vote and just vote for their guy. But that's, I guess, where the activism starts and ends for some people. And because of that, well, now the whole thing has been flipped because it's like, well, I don't support Donald Trump. And so you have to make the choice now, the administration. You have to listen to your constituents. The majority of Democrats overwhelmingly want to ceasefire. Actually, the majority of Americans do. Your own staffers do. The rest of the world does. This is something where everyone is screaming for. So uh, the choice is yours. If you want to defeat Donald Trump, defeat the orange man, because he is in fact bad, you got to do the thing. Organizing for peace for 40 years, and I've rarely seen such an organic and authentic movement come together in, as you say, le just three weeks. And we got over 100,000 people to vote uncommitted. This was something that grew up out of the Arab American and larger Muslim communities in Michigan, but it had great power among progressives, among Jewish people, Christians, Muslims, people of other faiths, people of no faith. Uh, college campuses were aflame about this. And the idea was that Michigan has this uncommitted box on our ballot, because remember, this is a presidential primary and some other states do the same thing. You're voting to send delegates to a convention so you could vote to send delegates uncommitted and in fact, we won so many votes, I believe we will send at least one delegate from two congressional districts, the 6th district, represented by Debbie Dingell, and the 12th district, rep, uh, represented by Rashida Tlaib. I think the significance of this, Amy, is that the president's people, and maybe the president himself, there's a danger that they see this as sort of like a political problem. We need to send surrogates. We need better messaging. People just need to realize what a disaster Trump Whoa. would be, which, of course... I didn't know this was a screen. And I just saw the change. I was like, oh, what? Oh. We can never let wow. him get near the White House again. So they'll come around, all of this. No. <laughs> this is war. This is the killing of tens of thousands of innocent people, leveling whole neighborhoods, most of the Gaza Strip. We don't just want you to set, use a better message. The message from us to the president yesterday was, you must change course. 
you must change course for the sake of your political reelection and because it's the right and necessary thing to do from every point of view, including U.S. national security interests, for God's sake. The message to the president is stop treating what Bibi Netanyahu says as the boundaries of boundary of the possible. You've got to move towards an immediate and permanent ceasefire and an end to this carnage. Free all the hostages, free political prisoners uh, among the Palestinians, including leading longtime prisoners who, if you, if you don't like Hamas, free Marwan Barghouti, who's been in prison for so long, who many Palestinians might support to change the situation there. So we really need actual change in policy, and I think we sent that message strongly last night. Uh, uh, Andy Levin, I wanted to ask you, uh, I was particularly struck by the turnout. The Michigan Secretary of State, Jocelyn Benson, said that this was a record turnout on Tuesday for a presidential primary, uh, compared to, for instance, South Carolina, where only 4 percent of Democrats uh, uh, voted in the primary. Here we had over, uh, it looks like 50 percent. Uh, could you explain this issue of turnout as well? Well, one thing is that there were more, quite a greater number of Republicans voting or people voting in the Republican primary than the Democratic primary. That's also something that's not great for President. I don't think last night was as big a victory as some of y'all are claiming. You can say I'm coping. I don't care. But regardless, we should still keep it up. I think, like, do you want my prediction, my honest one? I think that Joe Biden and his administration are going to ignore this. They shouldn't. It's at their peril. But it's also something in which, like, do you care more about getting reelected and defeating Donald Trump than you do about supporting Israel's genocide as, as a political party. And if that is the case, then I'm sorry, libs, you cannot posture, Democrats, you cannot posture that you actually want to defeat Donald Trump and that defeating Donald Trump is the ultimate thing to do, that he's the ultimate evil. Um, you're, you're basically being like, that this is more important. If, if we do have an option between the two, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the numbers are bad in Michigan. Yeah, you know, the, we could see the, you know, the Arab and Muslim population that is necessary for us to win that state, either sit at home or do nothing, or even in the worst case scenario vote for Donald Trump but most likely just do nothing right not not vote for either or vote for a third party or something or not support Joe Biden this is something that is effectively out of my hands like my my reach and advocacy can only go so far in like you know that I am a you know internet uh personality and I have a news comedy show that maybe I could sway whatever percentage of viewers I have in Michigan uh who aren't already probably effectively going to be voting for Joe Biden because they are not Donald Trump fans or supporters and they're trying to you know mitigate harm in some way or do uh, to protect LGBTQ plus people of that percentage the one person who was like but genocide Joe I hate them Lance and then they were like mm, we're, we're we're looking at around like 10 votes or so. So it's far, maybe maybe 20, maybe 30, you know, but I'm, I'm just saying realistically, it's not going to be like 100,000. So this is a problem that is much larger than myself and I'm identifying it and reporting on it as a lot of people should be because it's important. This is something that political strategists have been sounding the alarm of a long time ago. Yes, polling data sometimes, uh, is, well, not sometimes, polling data really far away from an election is pretty ridiculous. So much can change between now and uh, come November. And the, the months leading up to the U.S. election, they're going to be fucking loud if you think that they have been loud or annoying for a very long time yes america is in a perpetual election cycle but holy fuck it's just going to be the that's where the like the millions and millions of ad spending and radio spending it's just like you will be bombarded by 24 7 election anxiety no matter even if you're a normie and you're unplugged that's just the reality of what's about to take place you know prepare yourselves in any way shape or form that you need to but that's what's going to happen and as you get up to that moment yeah so much fucking things can change between then and now but what is crucial is people have been pointing out that you can't ignore this. It's, this is not something like, well, this this is, uh, you know, 50 years ago or something like that. You can look at these patterns. You can look at these registered voters and you can look now at this demonstration. This is 100,000 plus people in a state that Donald Trump won by just over 10,000 votes. This is an order of magnitude to 10, 10 times that of people who have said these are our terms and conditions or we will not be voting for you. We're not saying we're going to support Trump. We're just not going to support you. Your choice, your move. Now, can Joe Biden win the election even without Michigan? Yes, but it's mathematically much, much, much more difficult. 
much more difficult. And this is, again, a pathway that ultimately is in the interest of the American people. It, it, you will save money. You will be sending less money in support and arms and arms manufacturing to a nation that is currently using your bombs to kill babies on a scale of which everyone is completely horrified and devastated by. Your own constituents, 70% of Democratic voters, want do not want this. Do, do not want this current course of action. They, they do not, like, that, that, that's the majority, the plurality of your voters don't want you to keep doing this. This, again, it, 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 this is a situation where, yeah, you can have someone who is so ideologically bent on that I have to do this, I have to do this, like Joe Biden is. Like, when you're listening to interviews with him, you hear the words that he's using. He's like, I am a Zionist. Uh, I, I believe that, like, you know, Jewish people will not be safe anywhere if Israel does not exist, which is such a fucked up thing to say when the majority of Jewish people on the planet live in the country of which you are the president of. What are you saying out loud? That's fucked up. And that's the kind of thing that you would hear from someone saying that and be like, so is this person trying to, you know, govern in defiance of the will of his own people in a democracy? The, the, the way he's speaking about this one issue issue where this is yes you, you can say some people it's, it's foolish to be a single issue voter but some people have chosen genocide as like this is a line i can't cross i can't support the genocide of palestinians by voting for joe biden that is an effective thing that people are saying out loud right now and thinking and showing you right here that they're willing to actually do something about it, you know that, that's that's the, the the fucked up thing about all this Again, if you genuinely did care, and say this to Democrats and like the liberals who say this kind of stuff, if you genuinely did care about defeating Donald Trump, you would take this very fucking seriously. You would you would be like, we have to do everything in our power to pressure the president, the administration, the cabinet, whatever, to reverse course and on this. And then, then, then we cannot stop until we do that because it is paramount that we defeat Donald Trump in this upcoming election. And this clearly is something that isn't going to go away. Everyone, uh, like, they've tried all the old strategies, they've tried all the old techniques, they've tried all the kind of mass manipulation through, you know, the, the mainstream media reports and the news that's come out that they've done in previous cycles. It doesn't work anymore. You, you can see that this they've lost the generation. Like, the Democrats are also at, at risk, and as are liberals and liberalism, of losing an entire generation uh, in, its, in, in its totality, right? If there's a whole bunch of kids who are seeing this whole, and, and like, they see for the first time it, with their eyes, like, the horrors and atrocities uh, that are occurring in a region of the world where they're just constantly being condescended and talked down to, where it's like, it's not as bad as you think. It's complicated. It's complicated. Yes, and, and Israel does have a right to defend itself, and, and it's complicated. You have to know, this. there's a lot of history here, okay? Just please, it's complicated. It's complicated. Every single time that is being met with, like, dead children and, like, and their body parts all over the place, dead babies and, like, people and testimony of doctors and nurses who are, like, the smell of death as dogs are eating cadavers of children. Like, this is horrors beyond imagination. We've never seen anything like this. That's what they see. That's what they hear. That, that and, and that breaks right through all of the bullshit. There is no more, like, you can just watch a CNN report and be like, well, it's good. We're furthering American interests overseas right now. It's a good thing. This invasion of Iraq. It's oh, the second one, the sequel, but it's good. It's good. It's good that we're doing this for national security. It's, it's in our interest to keep doing things like this. Absolutely it is. This will defeat terrorism. We can we can defeat terrorism, terrorism, the, the idea, the ideology. Just we can get we can defeat an idea. We can get rid of it. Certainly not inspiring a lot of other people to now take up arms and get real mad and get real angry. We're not creating Hamas two and Hamas three and Hamas four. We're not creating ISIS, ISIS K, ISIS L, ISIL, like all, all these different things. We're not we're not inventing them through our own destruction of these regions. Biden, but there was some sense of a contest on that side, right? Even though we all know that Nikki Haley was. This morning, President Biden and former President Trump coming off huge wins in Michigan. We demand a permanent ceasefire now. But it's these voters who shook up the Democratic primary. If he doesn't get it together and change what he's doing, we will not vote for him. I mean, this is mainstream media. It's breaking through. Again, a lot of these stories that otherwise, like, I saw a post by someone uh, on Twitter who was uh, like, I'm, uh, what is it, like, third year? Uh, no, they were, they were some military, uh, they, they, they had been in the military, the U.S. military for a long time, saying that, like, I can guarantee you that heads are spinning right now over the actions of that, you know, U.S. military member uh, who self-emulated. Like, that, that is not, this is not normal. This, this is not something that, you know, you're, you're consistently prepared for. And, like, yes, there's going to be forms of protest that people do, but this, this is something that is just so 
violent, graphic, extreme in every single way that this is something that most likely a lot of people are like, holy fuck, kind of a moment, right? So again, this 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 as a protest vote featuring over 100,000 people who took time out of their day to, to, to go vote as a form of protest in this regard. In November. Overnight, an extremely unusual watch party for voters who cast their ballots not for a candidate, but for uncommitted in protest of President Biden's handling of the Israel-Hamas war. I didn't feel good about voting for Joe Biden. Um, he's been pretty complicit about the genocide happening in Palestine. The efforts organizers... Have and by the way, if people's gut reaction to this is condescension or anger or trying to call them out or call them idiots or be like, oh, fucking enjoy that, all you Arab and Muslim voters, you're all going to be deported once Donald Trump comes into power, stuff like that. It doesn't work. I'm sorry to tell you. I mean, I mean, you're just basically virtue signaling that you're unable to learn anything. You're unable to adapt, evolve, or, or take in new information and then suddenly change a course on something. If you realistically, mathematically want to change people's minds, they've told you how. They've given you the pathway. And it is one that, again, is pretty universally seen, I, I would say, by most organizations who track this stuff for a living as the moral and ethical thing to do here. In fact, it's below the bare minimum. It really is. You know, there's reasons why that, you know, humanity came together to decide there are certain things we collectively should not do and should not uh, aid. In fact, we have a moral duty to stop it. We can never let things like this occur again. And when we recognize and witness and can and can identify them occurring again, we do have an obligation to stop it. And so it doesn't matter if it's Amnesty International, it doesn't matter if it's Human Rights Watch, it doesn't matter if it's Doctors Without Borders, all these organizations, they are all saying the exact same thing on this topic. It's like, again, this is one of those things where you are, and by you I mean America is one of the sole countries on the planet that is still consistently vetoing resolutions for a ceasefire on this conflict. You know, on this, like, I characterize it as a genocide, and I agree with Emma Viglin. We should be democratizing and, and normalizing, calling it that, uh, because it's important when it is. It, it's important not to ignore it. It's, it's important to to witness it. And that case put forth at the ICJ, if you want a really good breakdown of it, watch Noah Sampson's video just so you can see the actual video footage that corresponds with a lot of the quotes or a lot of the pictures or a lot of the images. He just put it out, Noah Sampson, on YouTube. Um when you go through the case, when you go through all of the atrocities, the war crimes that have been committed, all of the quotes specifically said by members of the administration, either people in positions of power, generals, all that kind of stuff, the case is quite clear. So much so that even though the stakes are incredibly high and controversial for them to have said that there's a plausible case for genocide and we're going to move forward with this, like it's something that in the past America would have loved to shut down. You know, America would have loved to have been like, yeah, we, we do have a judge in there appointed by Hillary Clinton. Uh, we, we would really like, you know, if you could use your influence or something to, to, to vote no on this or at least, uh, you know, not make sure that we can get the rest of the judges to not agree that, that this should go forward. Something of that, of that nature. Um it's it's historic it's an it, it is unprecedented in terms of like you know israel has never been held to account like this uh, everything should be on the side again like in terms of your argumentation why do this there's so many reasons the the, the preservation of life uh, the statement that it's it's wrong to do ethnic cleansing to take uh to, to to prevent the the mass loss of life to to end end a forced starvation this, this is people, millions of people, being forcibly starved. Again, it, like there's times when you have to wrap your head around that very concept, but they're forcibly starving them. So the, the, we are choosing to starve millions of people, half of whom are children. It's, it's like, this couldn't be a more striking example of there is a right and a wrong thing to do here. There is a right side of history and there is a horrifying, holy shit, how did you let that happen side of history? How did you do nothing? How did how did you stand by? How, how, how did that just, how, what was life like? Like, seriously, what, did, did, you, did you just talk about it all the time? Did you, did you, and like... Yeah, you kind of, I mean, sometimes it was it's always in the background, you know, always, always in the background. You can always just just feel the, the horror of the whole thing. But but yeah, and set their goal at 10,000 votes. They got more than 10 times that you voted for President Biden 2020. So you think in November you might vote for former President Trump? Correct. Here in Dearborn, Arab Americans make up a majority of the population. 
Longtime Democrat Ramsey Kassam told me he was furious with the Biden Beto's, or Beto is called for a ceasefire. Good, good, good. Administration. Everyone should. The death toll in Gaza. I think it's More. a bad idea to vote and commit it to send that message. The Biden campaign points out overall, uncommitted only got 13% of the vote, about the same percentage as some previous primaries. Still, it feels like nothing is happening. Well, like, again, the, the reason why a lot of countries have already come out and, you know, world leaders have started using the term ceasefire, that is a large part due to your pressure. Don't say that it's absolutely nothing, right? I know sometimes it feels helpless because we are not doing all that is necessary quickly enough. That is true. The, there's a massive failing on the behalf of just humanity. Collectively, there's a lot of things we failed at in this process, and we should be ashamed of ourselves for that. But also, don't stop fighting. Don't stop pressuring. Don't stop writing. Don't stop canvassing. Don't stop doing everything that you can do within your power to be able to convince the people who aren't listening to listen. Because eventually, if you look at what, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia, the only reason they're finally doing that joint declaration is things have gotten so fucked up that it's 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 basically, yeah, we cannot continue to state nothing. We, we have to say that there has to be an immediate ceasefire and there has to be an exchange of hostages and all that kind of stuff. Like The death toll is now uh, on the verge of just spiraling, right? And it, it is going to spiral. Like, the fact that there's already deaths from starvation, uh, once that starts to increase, the fact that, like, 90% of children apparently may have infectious diseases. That was a statement that was put out the other day by the UNRWA. That's really bad. Really, really bad. And a lot of people are starting to recognize, am I going to forever be on the wrong side of history on this one, right? Like, am I going to be remembered as, say, like a monster who effectively was not only trying to downplay the severity of what was happening, but was also trying to prevent anyone from stopping it, for, uh, vetoing anyone from stopping it, vetoing anyone from from effectively uh, ending all arms sales to a country that was committing these atrocities, for example, right? Unless you wanted Trump to win. Donald Trump only beat Hillary Clinton in 2016 by 10,000 votes. This is why it's incredibly important for Democrats to listen or like just the other thing is that that you won't be able to pretend like you didn't know how it happened this time, right? You won't be able to do that whole like, oh, it's because America racist. Uh, no, America sexist. That's why. America sexist. And that's the only reason why. Yeah, nothing, nothing to do with Hillary Clinton as a candidate and Hillary Clinton's policies and Hillary Clinton's war hawkishness and also just the isolation uh, feeling that is happening under capitalism and then the inability for the Democrats to actually recognize that and realize how working people are really struggling and they will turn if they are uh, looking for an alternative to that to someone who's capable of scapegoating their problems and selling it to them in the form of its immigrants, its trans people, etc. So, you know, fascist types, populist types, uh, national populist types. Donald Trump, like ignoring all that at your peril, at your fucking peril, to the point where it either has to be willing, you either don't give a fuck, and, and, and or you are just like, it's worth it. You know what? We're going to just, we're going to get back at this on uh, 2028. You know, 2024, not our year. Hopefully that whole project, 2025, doesn't turn out to be true. But anyway, it's 2024, not our year. 2028, that's what we got to start looking towards. Yeah, yeah, we definitely are thinking... Who could save America? Pete Buttigieg. You know, I think America is ready for a Pete. A Pete. President Pete has a nice ring to it. It sounds neat. It rhymes with neat. President Pete. You know? Votes in Michigan. President Biden won the crucial swing state in 2020 by about 150,000. So any protest votes could be critical come November. On the Republican side of the race, Mr. Trump has now swept the first five contests and called to thank Michigan supporters overnight. I'm so proud of the results because they're far greater than anticipated. But his rival, Nikki Haley, says under the former president, Republicans have actually lost ground as she moves on to Super Tuesday state. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Keep going, Nikki. Don't drop out. Don't. Uh, hey, come on. We, we need this race to keep on going. It's the primaries after all. All right. We're not even done the primaries. Everyone, everyone needs to calm down a little bit. OK, I know. I know that every single moment that goes by, it's like you have to pledge your allegiance to one or two parties right now. Even you, you who don't live in the United States or are not American and cannot vote. I you might say I, I have no power there. I, I can't, you know, just vote. I can't do that thing. I can't. I can't just vote. I can't just vote. No, you cannot do that. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Can you please hit the like and subscribe button and maybe leave a comment? It really does help the videos out. But first, the people who produce everything you see before you and make this entire channel possible. Amazing Fletch, Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hagbard Salim, Multimondi, Omni, Peanut Butter Blondie, Political Puppy, 
Quiet185, Rachel K, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Ruby K, Cernicus, Spinach Monster, Stellar Vision, Sebastian Demel, Trevbot.exe, Words Greenwood, and Travis McClinton. And also, thank you to every other person who helps fund this show. Their names are on the screen right now. It would not be possible without every single one of them. We cannot thank you enough. And if you want to join the Patreon, please come to patreon.com slash thesurfs and, and, and help us exist.